Let's cover the three most popular lookup functions in Excel. I'll show you how each of these functions work, and at the end, I'll explain which one's my favorite, starting with VLOOKUP. Everyone knows VLOOKUP, but what you may not know is that it's easily the worst lookup function we're gonna cover today. And I'll bet you use it all the time. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Okay, here's how it works. Here I have a profit and loss. I wanna find the value for sales and marketing expense in Q3, 2023. So I'll enter equals VLOOKUP, open parentheses. Now Excel is asking me for my lookup value. I'll point to the value that I want right here for that. Then I'll hit comma. Then it's asking for a table array. This is where my data lies. So I'll select the entire table, then I'll hit comma again. Okay, now it's asking for a column index. This is the number of columns to the right of where this lookup value exists. So I'll count one, two, three, four. Now it's asking for an optional argument on whether I want an approximate match or an exact match regarding my range lookup. Approximate match means Excel will look for the closest match to what I'm looking for if it can't find a match, while exact match means it will only return a value if an exact match is found. I want an exact match, so I'll enter in zero for false. I'll go ahead ahead and hit enter. And there you go. The value got updated. Now I can change the value from sales and marketing to any other account and the value will update. Now you may be thinking, great, let me use this one. Stop. Do not use this function. This function is so limited for so many reasons. First, I need to enter in a column index manually in my formula. That means I need to count each and every column. What happens if I insert a new column in my data? Well, now I have to change my lookup formula. And on top of that, I can only look up information in one direction. What if I have information to the left of this column? can't do it. Oh, and here's my biggest reason. See, I'm only looking up information vertically, hence the name VLOOKUP. What if I want to look up information horizontally instead? Okay, well, I could technically use an HLOOKUP, but what if I wanted to use both of those together? Welcome to XLOOKUP, our second lookup function. But first, if you're new to this channel, hey, I'm Josh, and I help you grow in your career with Excel, finance, and accounting. So back to XLOOKUP. This one is so much easier to use. Check it out. Going back to our earlier example, I'm gonna type in equals XLOOKUP, open parentheses. Now I'm being asked for my lookup value. I'll again point to sales and marketing. Next, I'm being asked for my lookup array. Now here's the beauty. I don't need to select the entire range. I can just select the range where my value lies. Next, I'm being asked for the return array. Well, I can just select the values in Q3 2023 over here. Then I'll close my parentheses and hit enter. Looks like I got my value. Once again, I can change my input and my values will update. But that's not all I can do with XLOOKUP. I can also look up values in the opposite direction with the same syntax. So this time I've selected Q2 2023 as my input value, and I could select my dates row as my lookup range as such equals XLOOKUP Q2 2023. And then I'll select this over here for my lookup range. And then I'll select gross profit as such. And there you go, I got the value. Once again, I can go ahead and change the period and information will update. But here's where I'm gonna blow your mind. I can combine these two functions together easily into one nested formula. This will allow me to get the value for both an account input as well as a date input. So I'll come over here and I'll enter in equals X lookup. Then I'll start with my first lookup, general and administrative. Then I'll point to where my data lies. Now here's the key. I want to get my return range to be set to return the entire column for whatever period I have selected. Well, well, we can do that with another XLOOKUP function where I'll look up the period inside the list of periods. And for the return array, I'll actually select this entire table of values. I'll then go ahead and close my parentheses and hit enter. Look at that, it works. I can now change the values for my account and my quarter and my information will update. Here, let me show you what the second X lookup function is doing behind the scenes. I'm just gonna come on over here. I'm gonna press control C to copy it. Then I'll come to this cell. I'll hit equals and then I'll paste this second X lookup. The entire range returns for whatever range I select over here. This is selecting Q4 2023. I could change to Q2 2023 or Q1 as such. This is what's called a spill function and allows you to return a range of values that sit in this cell and spill into all of these other cells. While XLOOKUP is cool, it's also tough to remember this syntax. Oh, and if you're using an older version of Excel, you may run into compatibility issues, which is why my favorite lookup function is index match. This is actually two two functions in one, first index and then match. The index function is one of the simplest functions out there. You just specify a range, enter in your row number and column number. So as you can see here, I've selected my entire PNL as the range. 
If I want MRR for Q3 2023, well, I just need to hit three for the row and then three for the column. I'll close the parentheses and hit enter. Check it out, my MRR value populated. I can also look up things in one direction, say to get gross profit in Q1 2023. I'll write equals index open parentheses. I'll then select all of Q1 2023. I'll then hit comma and then I'll enter seven for my row, which is where gross profit lies then comma and zero for the column, which can also be kept empty. I'll close my parentheses and hit enter and check it out, 61049, my value populated. If I wanna select the value for hosting and servers for Q4 2023, I can just select that as my index, hit comma, zero for the row, comma once more, and then four for the column, close parentheses and then enter. I find this syntax to be much easier to understand instead of XLOOKUP, but I have a problem. I don't wanna type the row and index number. I instead wanna dynamically get that. Well, that's what the match function does. Say I wanted to find the position of net operating income. Well, I'll write equals match, open parentheses, then I'll select net operating income, hit comma. Now I'm being asked for my lookup array. So I'll select all of these values over here in my range, then I'll hit comma and I'll enter again zero for the match type. As you can see, the value is position 14 in this list as such. I can select other income and expense and this will then grow to 15. So let's now combine these to get the value for research and development for Q4 2023. So I'll type in equals index, open parentheses, then I'll select my values over here, and then I'll hit comma. Now I'm gonna enter in my first match function for the row. So I'll type in match. I wanna match the value of research and development inside the list over here within an exact match. Now I'll enter in my second match. This time, I wanna match the position of Q4 2023 inside the range of values over here. I'll again hit comma, enter zero for exact match, and then close the parentheses. Check it out, my value populated. Now I can change any account here in any period, and the information will dynamically update. But lookup values are just one part of Excel. When you have the data that you want, you need it to put together in a beautiful dashboard. And this video right here, is gonna walk you through how to do that with ease. Which one's your favorite lookup function? Let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you next time.